Two weeks ago, I suffered a pulmonary embolism. And up until then, I didn't even know what a pulmonary embolism was. So here's a quick video that I've found on YouTube that explains it really well. It's called deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. DVT occurs in over 400,000 Americans a year. Complications occur when a clot breaks off and travels through the circulation system. When it reaches a blood vessel it cannot flow through, a blockage occurs. This is called an embolism. 90% of the time, it occurs in the lung. A pulmonary embolism is a life-threatening event. But here's the events that led to the pulmonary embolism. Looking back, it all started with the Durger Mike Felvin. Down at the registration, everyone's just getting the numbers. 347, my lucky number. Ian, the man from last year. Yeah. You ready Did, for it? Didn't learn his lesson last year, couldn't <laughs> do it again. Uh, I know. Looking forward to it. How are we going to be uh, at the end of the uh, race? Uh, hopefully it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, it looks ideal running conditions. It Obviously does. much warm. milder than last year, so yeah. no cartwheeling off the top on ice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Should be really good. Good luck. I'll see you around. I'll see you around there. there. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Basically it's five miles up. Um, about, I think it's about 1300 feet um, and then it goes down and then there's a few more elevations of 300 so I think it's about in total about 1600 feet elevations. And looking at video footage from the morning before the event, I was actually talking about um, a little tweak to my uh, calf as well. Um, so that must have been what the clock was. So it's the morning of the Dirge Run here at Rothbury in a beautiful little cottage round the back. I'm just out walking the dog. Um, happens tonight at six and a bit of cold still so i've got um i've had lem sips fixed vapor rub on and my calf is a little bit tweaked but we'll be all right um and that thrombosis that clot that blood clot had moved and maybe that's when i first started um with the pulmonary embolism and i, I shot some video the next day just talking about the event and i talk about the first two miles and how my chest was tight. Yeah, happy with 14th with a uh, cold and uh, tight chest. So I found it really tough after the second mile. I think it was around the second mile. But anyway, did it. Uh, it was good, feeling good. And the week before, I had like a, a hoarse um, voice. Um, I thought it was because I had a cold, the onset of a cold. But when I look back further back uh, a few weeks before as well, I had my voice was just a bit raspy. Um, and I've read that potentially that the a pulmonary embolism, a, the slow onset of one can change the voice box. And I'm now thinking that might also have something to do uh, with the onset of, the, uh, of what happened. Beautiful evening. 
Let's look at that. It's been 14 degrees here. It's been talk of 20 degrees in February. I don't know whereabouts that is though, not in Gloucestershire. Don't think, I don't know. But it feels like spring, it's good. Um, I've got a bit of a cold and uh, this weekend I'm doing the Durja 10k, so it's Durja 10 mile fell runs. In fact, it still feels raspy now um, too. So uh, maybe I've got to ask the docs whether that's anything to do with it and uh, ask the right questions to the consultants, I suppose. Then I drove six hours home the day after the event. So that was on the Sunday, the event was on the Saturday night. Um, and then I traveled the next day um, to the airport and then I flew to New York. It's the weekend after the Dirge Fell run and uh, I'm here at Gatwick Airport. I'm feeling not too bad. A little bit tired, slept like a baby last night, it was awesome. And uh, now I'm on my way to see my younger bro in New York. On top of that, I got up at uh, 5.30 in the morning uh, in New York and went running, early morning, running at dawn around Central Park. I did about five miles and that's when the problem started. Morning from Central Park with my little bro. Morning. It's a tasty cold one, minus three. And I woke up the next day, I was meant to be running, uh, going another run um, the next morning in New York and I was in pain. So I'm in New York <coughs> and I went on a run yesterday around Central Park. I was going to go out running again today, but I've got a real tight chest and pain, like, a, like I've cracked my ribs. So I think I've got a chest infection. So... Uh, that's put paid to all of my any running in New York now and mileage this week and I'm a bit concerned maybe next week too while I get on some antibiotics so I'm gonna wait till I get home to see the doc hopefully it won't get worse and uh, and yeah unfortunately so that was probably post the fell run that I did um, I felt a little bit sort of out of breath going up anyway and I didn't, it hadn't, the cold hadn't gone to my chest, but it uh, certainly has now anyway. So that's put paid to running in New York. That's 5 I left on the Monday and uh, landed on the Thursday night. Uh, so on Friday morning, the chest pains were really, really 
bad now at this point and my breathing was um, it was probably at its worst as in lung capacity wise um, so I called the doctor unfortunately the, there wasn't an emergency appointment with my my GP so then I went in the drop-in um, at the local health center um, and from there I went to A&E in Cheltenham when I was in a&E at Cheltenham, um, I got rigged up with an ECG, checked my blood oxygen levels and all my vitals were good. Um, they did mention something about my, my heart beat was a little erratic or there was something strange there. Um, but basically they kept me in all morning, afternoon and uh, went for an x-ray just to confirm they, because they thought it was a potential collapsed lung. Um, and they wanted to check if it was pneumonia or lung infection too. So I'm uh, in A and E at the moment with either a lung infection or a collapsed lung. One of the two. Um, but the X-ray brought up that it was uh, neither of those two. So then I had further blood tests. Um, they came back as inconclusive of a blood clot um, and um, but they they still thought it was a pulmonary embolism so um, that's the only thing that it could be they said and at this stage they put me on blood thinners um, which I've got now actually River Ban, uh, Zarelto. So I've got to take two of these um, a day, one in the morning, one at night. So um, they put me immediately on the blood thinners and then um, sent me home. I was okay, my vitals were all okay. Um, and they just gave me a list of things to be careful of if um, I had any of these symptoms, coughing up blood, etc. Trouble uh, breathing, then to call 999. Um, and then I went back on the Monday and I had a CT scan, um, which then confirmed that um, I'd had a pulmonary, uh, bilateral pulmonary uh, embolism. Um, so, yeah, so next step is basically um, I'm going to see my GP. Apparently, I'm going to go for a heart scan to make sure there was no damage when the clot went through, passed through the heart. Um, and my breathing, as soon as I started taking over the weekend, actually, uh, after they thought it was, uh, started easing. And now every day my lung capacity is just, uh, you know, uh, improving all of the time. I'm walking further now before I was out of breath really quickly. Um, um, and I'm, last night I walked double the distance that I would normally when I was walking the dog and uh, I was still getting a slight tightness around the chest. So I suppose your body, you know, does let you know. And I think that one thing I have learned from being in Facebook groups, etc., is that everyone has a different experience with a pulmonary embolism. There's many similar signs to everyone, but I think for me, mine was slow and progressive over a period of time from a clot. Must have been because, um, you know, I enjoyed it before I flew to New York and until I came back and it just got progressively worse. And uh, obviously there's, there's those that have big ones quickly. And unfortunately in some cases, like I heard the sad news today that Charlie Whiting of F1, and I, I love Formula One, and uh, unfortunately he's died of a um, pulmonary uh, embolism. So um, just thoughts out to his, his family and loved ones. Uh, that's super sad. So yeah, so this is um, just really, I'm just looking to try and get back into running and cycling. And I haven't got a clue, I haven't got a time scale at the moment. I suppose the biggest thing is just keep every day uh, my lung capacity getting better. Um, keep walking, go to the docks, get everything signed off. The doc did tell me that I could start looking at uh, exercise again in 30 days. So uh, I'll just follow that lead and see how I feel and not rush back and just take it easy. I'm back at work anyway. Um, 
and because um, I'm sat down, but I'm st I'm also making an effort to uh, make sure I get out of my chair and walk around the office every uh, before every two hours. Because in my head, there's still that thought of um, another blood clot, um, even though I am on the the thinners now. So. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope this has helped some who may be new to, uh, and maybe you've had one, um, and you're now just researching it and seeing whoever, uh, who else has. And if you've had one before, before me, I'd love to hear from you as well and your experience. Um, and um, I just feel very lucky that I feel like it was a warning and um, I'm just gonna, you know, get back to my running and fitness as soon as I can and uh, yeah I want to spread the word about um, awareness really of blood clots. Thanks for watching guys and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my progress and hopefully I'll be back and up and running uh, soon and cycling and going to events so catch you soon.